Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. And of course, uh, we're gonna be watching another video here. We staying in Ireland, staying in Ireland. This one is called Early Irish Society, the Old Religion and the Druids. Burhan Law Academy is who set this video up, it seems. And ting, and I hope you guys are gonna enjoy it. Before we go anyway, let me thank you all for all the comments that you have uh, 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 given me on there, you know what I mean? Trying to make this a better experience for everybody, you understand? Also, thank you for those who uh, gave me the super thanks and for those who uh, uh, donated through the My Coffee link in the description. Thank you so much. Making this better, you understand what I'm saying? Thing. And uh, the point of the channel is so that everybody should learn a little bit about each other, so that we understand each other, so that when people, when the powers that be or people who don't have the best interests of us is involved, say, hey, let's go there and do this, let's go there and do this. Now, wait a minute now, this is what I know. You know, understand what I'm saying? Thing. Are we doing the right thing? You know what I mean? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Anyway, I'm gonna stop babbling here, but thank you all very much. You know, I'm glad to have you guys here showing that we're not that different anyway. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what this is all about. As early man tries to understand the natural forces working around him, it makes sense that he would personify these forces and give them names. And perhaps there was a period in history where early man knew that these names were merely symbols and signs to signify the natural forces. But over time this changed and the symbols became personified, they became real entities that people believed in. The old Irish religion was much like comparative early religion across Europe. It had many gods and goddesses who interacted with, favoured and even had children with human beings. The stories of their feats and adventures became the living myth, the common ethos and the collective story of the people. While the belief might have originated by personifying natural forces, over time the unseen forces became very real and living entities in the minds of the people. With the advent of Christianity, these great gods would be made smaller and smaller until eventually becoming the little people, the fairy folk who lived in the hills. Perhaps one of the most mysterious and intriguing aspects of early Irish culture, and in fact most of early European culture, is the existence of this elusive class known as the Druids. They're mysterious because we know so little about them. They wrote nothing down themselves. We think because they believed the written word could be corruptible and that knowledge should be passed down orally from master to pupil. And they were intriguing because we cannot avoid the impact or the influence that this elusive class had on early European history. All of the writings we have about them come from foreign, usually Greek or Roman writers. Notably, we have Caesar's descriptions of the Druids. From and of course, well, well, their writings you have to take with a grain of salt because they are writing from their cultural, religious and political perspective. So, you know, that's somebody else telling your history. And they're going to they're gonna tell the, the history in light of what they see from the outside, not what they feel from the inside. Unless, of course, they were raised in it and totally understand it. By just visiting a thing doesn't mean that makes you an expert on it, you know what I mean? Especially if you are looking at it from your own cultural perspective. Let's go ahead and see what else they say here. From his campaigns in Gaul. But these were not Irish Druids. We know even less about the Irish Druids. And what's more, much of the Irish literature that we do have was written by Christian monks, which predictably portrays them in a not too favourable light. Yeah. No better than charlatans and at worst devil worshippers. Same thing they did with voodoo. And as we call it on the island, Obia. In West Africa, there was just another religion. It's kind of like... Uh, Greek mythology is African mythology. You know, have the god of the sea, the god of the ocean, the god of the jungle, the god of the sky. Same sort of uh, 
idea as Greek mythology or as after even the Druids and stuff, you know, they, 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 they believe in nature and stuff to a certain degree or maybe mostly, as far as I could understand from what I've learned of them. In order to control people, one of the first things you have to do is to control what their spirituality lean towards. Once you start controlling that and you have them believing in something else so deeply, especially with something that is only faith you have to have it with, then you got them, you know, you have them uh, controlled to a certain degree. And that's what a lot of the major religions don't do that, overtly do that, or, or, or implicitly explicitly do it. It's an implicit sort of a, come to us. You go up to heaven, or whatever, whatever thing they use to get people to believe, you know what I mean? Let's get back to this here. Quote, As to what Druidism was, either in speculation or practice, we have very little information. As far as we can conjecture, their religion must have consisted of tribal divinities and local rites. As to the Druids themselves, we have no distinct information. The meaning of the word druid is unclear, but it seems to relate to the word oak and also to the word truth. They appear to have worshipped and prayed in woodland groves and caves. But beyond all the guff and the hype, I think that the druids were masters of knowledge, who simply sought to understand the truth of the world around them. The first philosopher scientists they stood out from the rest of the people because they had been given the necessary mental tools to understand nature, psychology and the physical universe. But we cannot ignore that they are invariably associated with magic, seeing of ghosts, conjuring spirits and supernatural occurrences. Perhaps this is the uneducated or the uninitiated common people's way of understanding what are essentially scientific and psychological processes. That's true to a certain degree there. It also depends on what the, the, the powers that be, if they're against that religion, is telling them, is teaching them in the schools. You know, what they, that's what's forming the idea of what these are, what and who these people are. Like, I'll give you an example. If I mention voodoo to an African-American, they like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And I'm trying to explain to them, I've been to voodoo rituals and stuff, you know, and I'm here. I'm not, I don't have a horn sticking out of my head or, or 17 toes or nothing like that, you know. <laughs> it's just a belief, you know what I'm saying? And... Uh, in a way, it's a way to explain the world. That's why you have the God of the, the sky, the God of the, the, the earth, the God of the sea, the God of uh, the jungle, you know what I'm saying? You know, they have the different deities that represents certain things in the natural realm. So when you think about it now, it's, uh, if, if they, they name it as a science and philosophy coming together, then it's the same thing with African mythology. Not that different, y'all. That the Druids were engaged in. James Bonwick says in Irish Druids and Early Irish Religions, it would be interesting to know if these seers of Ireland regarded the ghosts with an imaginative or a scientific eye. Could they have investigated phenomena with a view to gain a solution to the mysteries around them? It is as easy to call a Druid a deceiver as a politician a traitor a scientist, a charlatan, a saint, a hypocrite. In earlier times we know that the functions of judge, poet and priest were combined into this one office of druid. There was no separation of religious and civil affairs, especially when it came to public ceremonies, whether it be the inauguration of a king, the pronouncement of a true judgment, the prediction of victory in battle, being a witness to marriage or residing over death ceremonies. The Druid class were the learned spiritual elders whose blessings and guidance were constantly relied upon. We know they must have been highly intelligent. Their advanced mathematics and astronomical observations can still be found as testament to their brilliance 
in the numerous standing stones and passage tombs that are aligned to the rising and setting of the sun at specific times of the year. These astronomical alignments shed light on their beliefs. We know that certain sites were used at certain times of the year, for example Newgrange in the winter solstice, and on the hill of Tara, the megalithic mound known as the Mound of Hostages, lights up with the morning sun on November the 1st, for millennia a site for celebrating Sewan or Halloween. We also know that the movement of the sun through the seasons was very important to them. They knew the longest and the shortest days of the year, and they knew when night and day would be in perfect balance with each other. They personified this passage in the stories of their gods and their goddesses. But to quote Bonnick again, judging by the Irish literature, most of which may date from the 12th century, though assuming to be the 8th or even 5th, the Druids were nothing better than spiritualistic conjurers, dealers with bad spirits, and always opposing the gospel. We need to be careful of such reports, originating as they did in the most superstitious era of Europe and reflecting the ideas of the period. Whatever the case, the Druids and their practices remain a mystery to us, and all we can do is marvel at the monuments they left behind. And you could say the same thing for the, for the voodoo and stuff that, you know, that, that we know now. You know what I mean? Uh, it's been demonized so much that a lot of it has, you know, been lost. A lot of the true meaning. And of course, like that too, it was an oral transformation from a uh, transference from generation to generation so a lot of stuff has got lost there's no real written history of it that's how things get lost in history anyway i'll leave a link in the description to this video and uh you all could go check it out and thing you know what i mean this is pretty interesting i hope you guys find it interesting and of course here's what i want you to do okay in the comment section, show me a parallel, something that's alike, something that's the same as what is going on in uh, what, what, what the belief system in your country and stuff, or the evolving of the belief system in your country. Comment down below in the comment section. Tell me what you, what you see. Let's compare notes here to see, instead of thinking of how, how different we are, how similar we are. And even if we're different anyway, let's celebrate the differences, all right? I'm going to leave links here to other videos that I have uh, reacted to on Ireland. Pretty cool uh, thing to learn about there, you understand? Pretty cool country to learn about. And, uh, hey, come on back. Just keep watching. Keep watching. But come on back for the new ones, all right? You all take care of each other. Cool readings.